Hey there, good evening. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is a different and very exciting show for us. You know why? Because it involves the best of the Bronx. And it turns out that um, City Island did very well in the, the uh, Bronx Times and uh, Ponzi Bank's Best of the Bronx. And uh, we're going to um, bring a bunch of people throughout the whole program who um, were recognized as the best in the Bronx. So let's just start right away with the um, uh, president of the City Island Chamber of Commerce, also the owner of Kaleidoscope, and they won some stuff too. And Paul Klein, nice to see you, Paul. Good to see you, Gary. Um, so this is really exciting. So let's see, the numbers are, let's see, uh, they, a member of businesses for the City Island Chamber of Com Commerce were nominated in 27 categories and they captured 16 wins. That is that, that says a lot about what's going on in City Island, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Things are happening here and, um, you know, promotion, social media, things of that nature, um, absolutely helping everything. So um, we put signs out. Um, every business had a um, QR code in their windows so that people could vote for them easily. Um, so we made it as easy as possible and uh, customers spoke up. And uh, yes, City Island won 16 of 27 different categories. So that's really exciting. And you know what's exciting to me, and I was at the Artist um, uh, the other day, by the way, it's the former Starving Artist Cafe. It's now called The Artist, and that's where all these interviews are taking place. But I was there the other night, and I had a chance to say hello to the, the people who were there. And I was struck by the community, by the fact that people just came. They came to watch whatever music was up there. Some brought a bottle of champagne at the center of the table or a bottle of wine. And they just were so relaxed. And to me, the value of that community, the nature of that community is what drove uh, all you folks over the top. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great community. Um, pretty close knit. But, um, you know, our volumes uh of the island increased dramatically on the evenings and the weekends when we have people coming in from the Bronx and Westchester and Brooklyn and Manhattan um, coming to celebrate on City Island different events. And uh, they, you know, we draw from all different neighborhoods. So it's a very unique community in the city. And, um, there's and, and listen, the food yeah. is great, you know, and, and proof, proof is in the pudding, so to speak. That's a bad, bad pun, but proof <laughs> is in the pudding. Proof, proof is in the seafood, which is yeah. all over the island. So, but now let's get into you and your, um, your business, Kaleidoscope, uh, the Kaleidoscope Gallery, 271 City Island Avenue. If you haven't been there, get on out there. And here's a hint to my friends and neighbors. Don't go Saturday night in the summer. <laughs> Get, get out there like a weeknight tonight, uh, you know, in the winter or get out there when it's not crowded and the people are just, you be able to hug everybody you see because that's how everybody feels. Anyway, uh, the best toy store. And, it, and the, the quote was Kaleidoscope Gallery emerges as the foremost destination for discerning toy enthusiasts in the Bronx. How long you've been open and what distinguishes uh, Kaleidoscope's toy Store well, yeah. we've been open for 25 years. We're in a new location now for almost a year. So the new location is actually a bit larger. Our toy um, selection doubled in size. Um, we're featuring some major toy manufacturers um, as well as um, some locally produced product. So it's really an interesting little mix. Um, we use Melissa and Doug toys. We carry Toy Smith, um, a number of different people. All, uh, all the big stuff. Doing all the stuff and all the the little stuff, the funky stuff. And as you know, I've been in there because my wife, uh, uh, you know, participates in all the art craft shows. Right. I can't get out of there. And I'm not a kid. <laughs> I do have a granddaughter, but uh, and it, it's the, the selection is wonderful. It's one of those places you could just go through. A, I don't want to say like a museum, but it's just beautiful. And you can always find something for your kid. Or That's the nice thing. Yeah. About the store. I mean, we don't only do toys. We do jewelry. We do artwork, local artist work. Mm -hmm. We do um, imported items from around the world. We do gift items. Um, we repair jewelry. We have a great jewelry uh, estate jewelry collection. Um, so it's, it's constantly changing, um, getting new pieces in all the time. There's new artwork, there's new sculpture, um, gift items, uh, coffee mugs, uh, funny sayings, uh, greeting cards. And we have a selection from the um, City Island Nautical Museum 
when they're not open, we're actually their gift shop. So we're able to sell a product that benefits the City Island Nautical Museum. And, and, and I should add, before we run out of time, you also won for best collectibles the second year in a row that you won in this category. And the quote was, all of your custom design jewelry, jewelry repair, pr repairs, kids, toys, art, gifts, and souvenirs wants can be taken care of at one place, Kaleidoscope Gallery. And that was directly out of uh, the Bronx Times and, and their winner's guide. No, it was uh, a lovely quote. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it lets people know what we do. Um, some of the other winners, which are exciting on City Island, some of the chamber members, the Lobster House, um, got the best Long Island iced tea and the best lobster roll. Uh, the City Island Diner won for best Some breakfast. Of which I have already sampled, I have to tell you. Yeah, and best breakfast at the City Island Diner. Uh, Lickety Split for best ice cream. Tony's Pier for best oyster bar. And the Seashore Restaurant won um, with the best restaurant with a water view. So you, you get a lot on City Island. It, it's, really it, you know, it, it, it's wonderful. And, and we have to thank Monica Glick, who really uh, helped, you know, she put the, helped put this show together and does a lot of the publicity and, frankly, uh, put up the QR code so people exactly. could vote very easily. But to me, these wins show what City Island is about, that everybody comes together. We know, you look, you could measure the politics and we know there's some differences, but when it comes to the City Island and the development and the love for City Island, people, I mean, you know, people there, that's that's who they are. And that that's what made 16 best of the Bronx winners. Exactly. And it's so important to keep the, um, the community, the feel of the community. And um, that's something that we'll be dealing with the mayor going forward making sure uh, uh, that City Island community stays intact as a neighborhood. All, all, all the Bronx communities want that. Listen, uh, Paul Klein, president of the uh, City Island Chamber of Commerce, owner of Kaleidoscope Gallery, get over there, 271 City Island Avenue. We're going to say goodbye to you. We're going to take a very quick break, and Great. then uh, we'll talk about the artist. Don't Great. Worry. Thank you, Gary. Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. We're on City Island, and uh, we're celebrating, I'll hold it up again, the best of uh, the Bronx, and they won 16 awards. Uh, I guess I need a drum roll for this. The best concert venue in the Bronx is The Artist, formerly The Starving Artist Cafe, and uh, The Artist is Elliot Glick. Nice to see you, buddy. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. Elliot, you are really um, a special person. Um, it's amazing. Now, let's let's read what they said about you. Uh, the Bronx residents know that the, when, when they want to see a concert, whether it's pop, rock, holiday music, or just about any other genre, the artist, originally called Starving Artist Cafe, is an intimate small venue where they will be able to best enjoy the show. What makes the artist such a cool place so that it could qualify and become the best concert venue in the Bronx? Well, out of the, uh, out of the years I've been on city Island, it, it, it really comes down to what you were saying before about the community here. And, uh, in the artists, we have, uh, a, a big chunk of that community and, um, we appreciate it. And I hope that uh, they feel appreciated too. You know? Let, let's just talk a little bit about now that, that I was there recently, as you well know. Um, there are um, a range of artists that come in and you believe in music. Uh, I mean, you may have your own, you know, things that you like. Um, well, what is it that, um, that you do to bring in a range of music? I'm, of course, all local people, but, but how do you find people or do they find you? I'm going to talk a little bit about that. if you I say. very rarely ever say no. You know, <laughs> Which is the good news and the bad news. I know that. Good news and the bad news. Because sometimes I say no the second time. But but okay. uh, but I try everything and uh, and anything almost. We had a guy come in with a saw, you know, a crosscut saw. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. And, and he had a pickup put on it. And he had special effects pedal. And he played Purple Haze. That that is amazing, and so you just bring them in, and that to me was what was so interesting because you know audiences nowadays they'll look at something like that and they'll boo or they'll you know people in the house there they 
they just loved everybody who came up. I mean, that, it was just, it's just uh, fantastic. I have a very welcoming audience, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I grew up playing in coffee houses in the village. And um, when, I, when I switched over from being a jewelry uh, art shop, I, I uh, decided to do music. I tried to recreate those old coffee houses that I used to play in. I played in the gaslight. I played in, uh, actually played the top of the gate. I played. Um, the village gate and the, I'm sure you played the other end and the bitter end. Uh, uh, the bitter all of end. Yep. Um, and, and you know what, you're mentioning that um, is instructive to me because that is what it feels like when you walk in. It's got that old style. Yeah, I tried to capture know. that. And um, it's who I am anyway. I mean, it's, you know, it's my um, background, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Why did you change from the Starving Artist Cafe, which has some this little cachet to that, to um, the artist? Like, what was the deal? Well, with first, I always say uh, because I got tired of the jokes about uh, <laughs> being a starving artist. I'm starving, you know. <laughs> but, but uh, I wanted to. Oh, no, no joke. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I wanted to broaden what we did. The Starving Artist name really was when it was an art gallery. And uh, I, I, I went to uh, people who were starving even more, musicians. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I wanted to broaden it into theater and uh, I have independent filmmakers uh, that are lining up. I have, uh, we have uh, comedy night and poetry. You do a whole, so the, so the idea was to really expand it from what was fully reminiscent of the old style cafe in the village to yeah. something that that modernizes it yeah. and makes it more yeah, right. um uh so um how when when is it open when can people see stuff you know um let's let's promote the thing let's get people out there i'm just telling you folks it's real comfortable you can go in you can have a piece of pie i forgot i think i had a really nice espresso it's fantastic go ahead um so when can people come in well, I'm open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, generally. And that's uh, Friday night, 8 o'clock, Saturday, 8 o'clock, and Sunday, usually 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Do you, do you, um, do, do you close when uh, the music stops, or do you have a closing time? Or I, I, uh, I, you know, I've had performers that play even after everybody left. They just keep playing. And sometimes I have to tell them, guys, I, I want to go home. <laughs> um uh and and you 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 play you know i remember bill graham uh, the former um, entrepreneur of uh you know the, the fillmore and, um, he, he he would introduce the acts and uh, i remember a famous quote from him where he said you know it's my candy store and i can play with the microphone anytime i want and uh you you take um some liberties with that because you you like to play you like to be on there you like to write it, it's a beautiful thing, man. I do. Uh, my wife uh, handles the this, this scheduling and anything that my brain would forget in a, in a minute and a half. And so, because <laughs> I'm that guy. And, uh, but I just tell her, I, I book me, you know, I want in. You want, I, you want to be in there. Because, you, you know, to me, that personal touch, that feeling of family, that feeling of community, is all uh, what it's about. So ladies and gentlemen, the artist at 249 City Island Avenue, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday at three o'clock. Um, I, I can tell you privately, we're uh, working on a, a, an interesting project that might work out for some of those Sundays. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Elliot Glick, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, the best concert venue in, out of 1.4 million people. Thanks, Elliot. All right. We're going to take another break, and uh, let's see, what are we going to do next? Uh, I guess we're going to do um, uh, steak and seafood, right? Artie's. We'll be right back. Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. We're out on City Island. We're at the Artist, but we're celebrating the best of the Bronx. 16 different awards went to the uh, businesses and organizations out in City Island. So let's say hello to uh, Spiros Chigaris, and uh, nice to see you. He, how did you, 
how'd you get the name Artie's? He is the owner and executive chef at Artie's Steak and Seafood, 394 City Island Avenue. How did you get the name Artie's when your name is Spiros? <laughs> well, 28 years ago when we bought Artie's, and we had maybe 10 cents left in our pocket, the sign said Artie's, so we said, let's continue and build on that. Do you know who Artie is? Oh, certainly. Artie Bomanti family was, uh, uh, they started as a pizzeria, became a small Italian restaurant, and then we took it to the next step. And and in terms of, now let's see, let's see, you won five awards, ladies and gentlemen. So when you go there, I'm giving you your menu right now. Uh, it is the best clam chowder. Immerse your senses in a bowl brimming with succulent clams, tender potatoes, and a rich creamy broth that boasts a perfect balance of flavors. Best Italian restaurant. The restaurant boasts a menu that reflects a commitment to excellence featuring premium steaks, fresh seafood, and Italian-inspired delicacies. The best steakhouse. I mean, come on. Is it enough? No, it's not. This is Artie's second year in a row winning in that category. When it comes to steak options, Artie's does not disappoint. These are all quotes from the, the best of guide in, in uh, the Bronx Times. The best seafood for a seafood selection that's out of this world. Bronxites go to Artie's Steak and Seafood. And the best, the most romantic restaurant, that may be the most important of all, love is in the air at Artie's Steak and Seafood. The restaurant marries classic elegance with a warm, inviting ambiance that is sure to spark romance in your evening. Uh, Spiros, when you go in there and you say, hey, I think I feel like having some food, which one do you choose? Oh, it depends on the, you know, we run many specials every day. Uh, it all depends on the mood. Uh -huh. Of course, we have the finest steaks money can buy. We take great pleasure in our seafood, in our service. We take it very personally. It's a very uh, a family staff that is all on the same page to give real quality to all our guests. How, how long, you, you mentioned 28 years ago, how long did it take for you to feel like, you know what, we finally got to where we want to be? I mean, is it just in the recent day where you've won awards or, you know, somewhere along the way you said, you know what? We've built it up. We got it where we want it. It was a, crash, you know, a gradual crescendo, but I feel like the seventh year, eighth year, we really hit our stride. You know, even maybe a little sooner. You know, we, uh, we took a lot of time and a lot of patience and, and really made things very slowly and, and very thoughtfully. Uh, in, in terms of um, um, maintaining that, I'm presuming that you have to keep the, the staff, you you know, you have to keep a somewhat consistent staff so they know not only in the kitchen, but uh, out front what what's going on. Um, just talk about what has allowed it now. You know, if you've been there 28 years, you say it took you eight years. What, what's, what's allowed you to stay consistent? So many businesses have big, especially restaurants, have big issues. Well, that's the hardest part of the business. But uh, we, we have some great people with us. Uh, we make them feel like they're part of the family of Artie's. Uh, we learn together, uh, do new things together, and we just strive together to, as a family, to keep everything going in the positive direction and to keep it interesting for everybody and to keep it new and fresh. There's a lot of talk um, about businesses, small businesses, so to speak. I mean, Artie's is not a, a small operation. Um, what, what's the biggest challenge in this day and age? Is it getting product? Is it um, maintaining staff? Is you know what, what are the things that you come in there and say? Okay, we've got to do this because this is a challenge for us. Well, the first thing you know during COVID and after COVID, it was staffing, and now uh, it's just, uh, you know the cost of product. Cost, cost of product. Yeah. It's really difficult because we want to give everybody. We pride ourselves in giving large portions of the freshest food. And to do that becomes a little tricky when everything is going through the roof every day. Going through the roof and also you want to, you know, you can cut corners, but then all of a sudden you're losing quality. And that's of course- You don't cut corners. Then, then you don't get on this list <laughs> anymore. Um, and and um, in terms of um, people who come in there, uh, a lot of locals, City Island people, or of course in the summer, I'm sure it broadens it. Um, how do you view the, the clientele that come in and have dinner? We have a wide clientele. Uh, the City Island people have been very good to us, but we get a lot of people from Westchester, Long Island, Connecticut. And the interesting thing is a lot of people that come to us, 
will meet friends. Let's say they're in Connecticut and they want to go someplace to dinner with their friends from Long Island. City Island is the perfect meeting place to meet people from Jersey and Westchester and Connecticut and Long Island. It just works out for everybody. It seems to make it all even and fair for everybody. The, uh, even amount of driving, you know. Uh, so it's and and people love to come out here anyway because they love to go over the bridge and see the sailboat. So it makes it a perfect spot to uh, gather people. For people even from the outside to come there. You know, I've been there of course a thousand times onto City Island. And one sense I get is you realize, you know, there's seafood restaurants all around you, et cetera. There's a real, and, and this speaks well of the Chamber of Commerce, there's a real good community. You want all the restaurants to do well. Of course, you want to do well, but not at the expense of other people. You just want to bring people in. Yeah, the, that's, the, that's the main objective, to make City Island a fun, happening place. And people come from, from, from everywhere and for all of us to do well together. So if it is the most uh, romantic restaurant in the Bronx, if I bring my wife on like Valentine's Day or something, that makes me a hero. Oh, you're going to be a super. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're going to be out of town this year on Valentine's Day, but I'll pick the right Maybe day. Next year. Uh, listen, um, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, oh, thanks for having us. Uh, Chigaris, uh, you know, they, they have, do just an amazing job over there at um, Artie's uh, restaurant. Let's see, best Italian restaurant, best clam chowder, best seafood. Most romantic restaurant, best steakhouse, best, best, best. You never get tired of that, do you? You can't get tired of that. Thank <laughs> you. Anyway, thank you so much. We're going to take a short break. And uh, one final look at uh, City Island and the many people that won will uh, take us to uh, the best coffee in the Bronx. Don't go away. Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. This is it, the last one that we're going to do. But don't forget, they did actually win uh, 16 Best of the Bronx Awards on City Island. Uh, let's say hello to Peter Gennari, my buddy, who is the owner of Clipper Coffee at 274 City Island Avenue. Nice to see you, Peter, and congratulations. Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank, thanks for having me. Uh, let's see, Best Coffee House and Best Art Gallery, renowned for seamlessly blending the rich aromas of freshly brewed coffee. Boy, does that sound good. With the captivating allure of contemporary art, it offers a sensory experience Unlike any other, those are, those are their words. I am not going to dispute that. What made you think that you wanted to have an, uh, a coffee shop and open one up? Well, I, you know, I had been living in Manhattan for a long time. And um, the thing to do there was to go to uh, uh, coffee houses. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, but uh, my life changed. I had a, a life changing moment when I, I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, oh. I said, Life is short, uh, so I, I moved up to City Island and decided uh, I left my Wall Street career behind and wanted to open a coffee house and, and follow my dreams. Hi, and, and had you like was this something that you had done or you had an interest in, or you just thought it was a cool thing to do? I, you know, I just liked, uh, um, you know, I was I was looking for a, a change my life, and my a friend of mine said, "Well, what do you like to do?" And I said, "I like to hang out at a at a coffee shop." Uh, at coffee, different coffee shops. Uh, and he said, I don't know, can you make money with that? And I said, well, I'm going to try. Yes, I could. Um, the, what, what really characterizes it, aside from the coffee, and, and I, I, you probably know, I like, I like a latte with skim milk. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but um, uh, what really characterizes it, it's not just like walk in and, you know, listen, Starbucks is what it is. And you sit down and everybody knows the routine but it's got like a real neighborhood feel in there. You got a lot of space. Talk a little bit about, you know, the creation of even the atmosphere in this um, uh, coffee shop. Yeah. Like you've been talking about Gary, you know, a lot about community and we have a great community out here and it's, it's just a lot of fun to see everyone get together. Um, and you know, everyone either knows each other or is very welcoming to, to people that they don't know. So, you know, we get all types of people, young and old, from all over the Bronx, Westchester, that come down uh, and you know really kind of hang out and and have a great time talking about you know all different things and different things. just have that fun. I you know as you know I was there um, this past Sunday morning and you know I got a couple of friends out on City Island and they happened to be in the that's what they were doing they were hanging out at Clipper Coffee. Uh, let's talk about the coffee itself. Uh, sure. Talk a little like. Um, you, you got to get it from somewhere. I assume you don't oh, beans I, in the backyard. That's definitely what makes us special and, and, and stand out. I, I don't know any other place in New York City. We are actually farm to cup. 
So we own a farm down in Arbelias, Colombia, oh. where we source all of our, our beans from. Where, uh, where is that? I'm sorry. Oh, it's in Arbelias, Colombia, which is just, it's about an hour and a half south of Bogota. Wow. And we own the farm down there. So we, we import our own beans. Uh, it's from a biodynamic farm, so no animals are hurt in the, the making of our coffee. Wow. Um, we, we pick it up and we actually roast it here on City Island uh, with a roaster that we have in the back uh, as well. So I think that quality and, and that attention to detail really uh, comes through in the coffee. My, my, my jaw is dropped. I had no idea. I don't know if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, but when he opened the coffee shop, they were talking about, you got to get the beans. You got to the beans. South America, they came back with big bags and they, he says, we got the beans. Yeah. And I, I really did not know that. You know, a lot of the coffee shops do get it from some other provider or whatever, but you uh, do it and make it yourself. For, for This is really a bad question. For you, what kind of coffee? What What do you drink? Do you, do you want a cappuccino? Oh, I, you... I know. I'm not that fancy. I'm a black coffee drinker. Black coffee, just yeah, there you go. It's that good. Uh, our coffee really is that good and smooth. Uh, it, it's got a great nutty, chocolatey flavor to it. And um, I can just drink it, you know, straight, just like that. Well, and, you know, you you're, you're obviously you're in to make a profit. Now, if you've got the farm down there, um, it, it's busy enough. I mean, you're working out. I mean, the place looks about as healthy as a, a any coffee shop or any local business could be. Yeah. Uh, Clipper Coffee does great. We do great here on City Island with the local community. And we, we uh, attract a lot of people from, from Pelham Bay and other parts of the Bronx that come in. We also I also started uh, the Bronx Roasting Company. Uh, oh. which hopefully we'll, we will wholesale out uh, and people can buy online as well. And you can, so that we've started shipping our coffee all over the country and, and wow. bring it to Bronx all over the place. And, and what do they, they come in the one pound bags or something? Yeah. What? Mainly it's what? one pound bags. I'd love it if you make a couple of Keurig cups because that's how uh, Gary gets his coffee from the Keurig machine here at home. But I guess that's in the future. All, all that's on the table. Well, wow. yeah, definitely. And we're, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to build a wholesale business as well. We have five pound bags that we're selling to a, a few places right now. And oh, hopefully that will continue to expand. That's fantastic. And what I also love is your vision. And the vision, part of that vision was that you should have artwork there and should be local artwork. Yeah. And so you did get Best Art Gallery as well. Uh, yeah. And also, oh, it says that you were honored this year by the City Island Chamber receiving the Sam Bierman Award for Business and Community Service. Well, congratulations. Did you, um, everybody wants to be successful when they start a business. Did you think it was going to go this well? I mean, presumably you think this is kind of going good. Yeah, I think it's going good and, and, and hopefully we can keep it going. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we, I really wanted to have a, a great time and, and affect people's lives differently and, and, um, and bring meaning to my life as well. And I think we've done that. And at the same time, having a great, you know, having a lot of fun. Um, with friends. You know what, we're, we're almost out of time and I, I don't want to uh, cut you off, but um, that's really what I've heard from everybody. Spiro over there at Artie's said, yeah. you know, we love what we do. It's a romantic place and we serve quality. Uh, Elliot talked about it at The Artist. Uh, Paul talked about certainly the chamber and also Kaleidoscope uh, and, um, uh, and, and you're talking about it. This is what City Island is about. So uh, congratulations to you. Let's see, there were uh, 27 nominations and 16 awards, the best of the Bronx. It's out there on City Island. Get out there. Don't, don't be shy. And as I said earlier, don't go Saturday night in the summer. It's just going to, it'll be a nightmare and you're not going to want to be there. Go now. Go in the afternoon, take a take a Sunday afternoon stroll up City Island Avenue, stop in all these places and, and say hello. Tell them Gary said hello. And that's what we do. Anyway, Peter, thank you so much. Thank you to Spiros. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to Elliot. Thank you to Monica for putting all this together. And uh, that, I guess, will do it for uh, the Bronx Buzz uh, for this evening. So what I always say is if the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, I'll be back next week. Good night.